What is life? Now, as a PhD student, an existential crisis is a regular part of our lives. But like most PhDs, I can't answer this question because, well, we don't have a life. So how do we answer this question? Science. Now, life starts with DNA, which makes an RNA, which further makes the protein that we all need. Or maybe perhaps life is a piece of cake. Well said, Plato. Now, imagine the DNA to be a cookbook that you would like to bake a cake from, but you don't want to get the book dirty. So the recipe is copied on a piece of paper, which becomes your RNA. The amino acids are all the ingredients you use to bake the delicious cake you want. Now, let's see the recipe here. One egg per try. As you can clearly see, I haven't baked a cake before, but bear with me. You can read the instruction. It's four words, each with three letters. When read as a triplet, it makes complete sense and so does the sentence. But if you shift the letter, there's not going to be any cake. This is exactly how an RNA is. However, instead of 26 letters of the alphabet, we only have four. Each triplet encodes for the right amino acid, which finally makes the right protein. Now, this process is called as translation. Now, like with the recipe, if you mess up the reading of the RNA, the protein is not formed. You can say that it was lost in translation. Now, the molecule doing all the work of making the protein is called a ribosome. It's a new day, it's a new RNA, and the ribosome is all set out to make protein A. Now, every story has a villain, and here comes ours. SARS-CoV-2. The sole reason that had the entire world baking countless banana cakes at the same time. Now, we've all heard that viruses manipulate our system. They get into your cells, they steal all your components, use it for themselves, and then just leave you destroying everything. Viruses are those exes that your friends prevent you from calling drunk at the bar. Now, SARS wants to use our ribosomes to make its own proteins. So the virus shows the ribosomes a shiny new path, unaware of the dangers, our ribosomes start working hard on making viral proteins that form its structure. Now, the virus has not had enough. It wants more. A SARS-CoV-2 virus is actually quite tiny. It does not have enough space to have one RNA for one protein. So it came up with the idea to reuse part of its RNA to make different proteins. Now, remember how I said before, a recipe is read in triplets, and if you read the recipe wrong, it stops making sense. However, for a SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA, it can be read in a different order and it still makes complete sense. The virus has to ensure that the ribosome starts reading the recipe differently. So first, it adds something on the RNA that makes it slip, say a banana peel, and then a further obstruction like a wall so the ribosome cannot proceed in the right direction. Now in real life, the banana peel is actually a sequence in the RNA that is quite slippery for the ribosomes to translate. And the wall is a strong RNA structure that the ribosomes cannot get rid of easily. Now the ribosome has started translating, it slips on the RNA, is obstructed by the wall. But the sneaky virus has another way to read the recipe from where the ribosome has slipped. And the ribosomes, unaware, proceed in that direction, making a completely different set of proteins for the virus. Now we, as scientists, have realized the importance of this wall and have now started attacking it with our chemicals. But you know who has, was already familiar with this sneaky attack of the virus? Our own cells. Now, using this wall as a bait, in our lab, we discovered a lot of proteins in our cells that interact with the wall and have harmful effects on the virus. The strongest of them was ZAP. We discovered that ZAP sits on the wall built by the virus and does not allow it to be built. Without the wall, the ribosome can still proceed in the right direction and make all the structural proteins the virus needs. However, without the replication proteins, the virus cannot survive in the cell anymore. You must be wondering then, why do we still get infected by the virus? Well, as Queen rightly put it, we are the champions and not I. ZAP alone is not enough. What we are doing in our lab now is searching for ways to get our body to produce more and more ZAP so that it has a significant impact on the virus. And we're also studying the protein more in detail to make a super ZAP, which won't allow the virus to replicate in our body. While we are quite optimistic, remember that this pandemic killed nearly 5 million people in just two years. We are working very hard, and so is your body. Till we come up with a solution, give it a little bit of help. Mask up and vaccinate.